Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things tech and finance. And in this video, I'm going to be going over principal component regression. Now, if you haven't actually checked out my previous video on what principal components is, I highly encourage you to check that out. The link should be popping up somewhere over here. And also I go over how to calculate the eigenvalues, eigenvectors, what type of packages you should use in order to conjure your specific findings that you may want to find within PCA. And also most importantly, what is PCA. So if you don't know what those specific details I just mentioned, highly encourage you to check that video out before you check this one. In this portion, I'll be going over how to apply the transformations of PCA to different machine learning models, uh, whether it be a simple little linear regression model or a more complex tree-based model such as XGBoost, or if you want to do neural networks, you name it, the logic is still the same. So at a very high level, the idea of principal component analysis is that it's trying to transform transform your given features inside your feature space to a specific principal component space of where it is trying to maximize the variance where you're trying to minimize the number of features that are actually utilized to explain such variance. Okay, so this could be my applied portion on how to utilize principal component regression and how you can actually utilize principal component analysis for other types of machine learning models. Now, the specific data set that I will be using today comes from a Kaggle data set website. I should say it's going to be over here, uh, life expectancy, and you can go to depth as to what type of features are incorporated and you know, under some uh, metadata associated with each of these features. So you can go ahead and check that out. But essentially what we will be doing here, oops, no break point. But what we will be doing here is that we will be predicting the life expectancy within each of these given values that we have here within the observations, utilizing all these other features that we have over here. Um, so this is gonna be a regression problem and a very interesting one at that. So we can take a look at this data set. We have 22 variables, about 3000 observations. Now to make my life a lot simpler is that I am pretty much gonna be removing all of the NAs that are associated with this particular data set. Um, and there are ways to address pretty much null values. You can check that down here. Uh, it's a really nice uh, imputation type of a play. Um, but if you're not familiar with that, go ahead and do check that out for NA type values. But anyways, I'm just gonna remove all of these uh, NAs and just stick with like very clean data. And as a result, we have uh, 1,649 observations now to work with for all intents and purposes. And as I was looking at this data set a little bit more, I noticed that there were a, you know three other features that I didn't really necessarily want within my given data set. So I'll be taking those out really quick. So I removed that and let's take a look at our data set once more and we should have 19. Yeah, we have 19 features to work with. Yeah, I just went ahead and typed in some additional information so that we can just, you know, start cleaning our data set. So I just split my set into 75%. Uh, for train and 25% for test. And notice here, yeah, you can see that 413 observations are with test and 1236 are with train. And notice if you add these two um, observations up, you should get the exact same as your original data set. So we'll be using these training and testing values to judge how well our given model will perform. And so let's see how well a linear regression does. So let's do like a very simple very simple linear model and the way to do that we just have a life since we are trying to predict this expectancy hopefully i spelled that correctly all the other features and then data is equal to train run that that should be good to go let's do a quick summary of this simple lm and we're not going to be uh, going ahead and you know just removing um various features based on whether or not they are significant or not. Uh, we're just going to be taking everything that we have here and just judging this model based on, you know, all of its given input. So let's go ahead and load in the library of metrics right there. Oops, that's a capital M. And we are going to be using the RMSE or the root mean squared error uh, to judge how well our model is doing. So the way to do that, pretty much, uh, let's get the predictions and you, all you're doing is just getting the predict, uh, utilizing the predict function, I should say. You wanna pass in the simple linear model and you'll be passing in your test set over here. So now we have our linear model of our predictions. And as we see, we are just pretty much like, um, I think this is like a double format. So we can easily convert that on over. 
so if we want to calculate the RMSE, uh, it's always going to be actual, and then I think it's called predicted. Yeah, it's predicted. So our predicted is going to be linear model predictions. Let's convert that to an as dot numeric, and our actual values are going to be our true values, which is just test, and that's going to be life expectancy. So as we can see here. Our RMSE is 3.595077. Now, whether or not 3.59 is actually good or not, it's sort of besides the point, but pretty much what we want in our case is that if it's a lower RMSE, then that is that indicates a better model. Okay, now that we have our basic linear model results, let's go ahead and start doing the principal component analysis. So if you don't already have this package installed, go ahead and install TLS because I will be using this specific library that is associated with this and this is related to like factor analysis or principal components it has a variety of functions which are extremely useful so let's go ahead and create our PCR model and we are just be calling a PCR function and what that PCR function is let me just do a quick question mark over here and it's partial least squares principal component regression you can go ahead and you know read a little bit more on the documentation on that but it provides a lot of great functions to use related to the principal components family. So pretty much the most important piece that I will go ahead and point out is that the value that we will be plugging into here is going to be somewhat of like similar to a linear regression type format. So we want this to be life dot expectancy, life expectancy tilde, everything else. And then we want to put in our train and then we want to scale it. Let's go ahead and scale it. Uh, let's be all caps. And let's go ahead and let's do cross validation. Validation formula should be CV. So let's run that. And I think that may be a lowercase e. And let's run that. And then let's run summary of the PCR model. And let's go ahead and expand that and rerun that piece again. So as we can see here, this is a real nice indication on you know the explanation of variance within each of our given uh, features that we have. We also have our cross-validated, um, I guess, responses based on the training and testing. So this is the output of an RMSE value, as we can see here. So the less um, the less better, I should say, uh, it becomes, then that indicates the number of components you should be using. So as we can see here, there's like a slow trend of improvement. So we have 4.4, 4.1, 3.9, 3.9. So the amount of improvement is just dropped from 0 0.2 to less than like 0 0.4, or oh, yeah, pretty much 0 0.4. So the number of components that I see that we can utilize is between five or six. We would essentially just do, you know, just calculate our predictions based on our principal component uh, regression model. And we'll just be passing in our PCR model and we can uh, pass in our test values. And then last but not least, number of components that we want to plug in, five and then run that, and then we can just pretty much do the exact same thing within our RMSE, and this should pretty much give you the exact same results. Oh wait, no. This should, you know, pr it'll provide you a different result, uh, partly because we're using a different number of components, but we shall see that very, very soon. So let's put that here, run that, we get 4.09821. So that might be a cause for concern, who knows, I couldn't really tell you on that, but the reason why is that we are using a lesser number of components, and if we were to use the entirety of the components, in this case, 18 components, we should actually get the exact same thing, so as, a, as our simple linear model. So we get 3.59 when I just change number of components to 18, and just going back up here, we get 3.59. So notice that I didn't utilize any rotation type formula. And the reason why that they're equivalent is because the there is no rotation. So I'm not using Veramax, Oblomax, I don't know, uh, some other um, some other rotation type formula. So just note that. Uh, but yeah, pretty much you can utilize whatever number of components you would want. And whatever your use case is, go ahead and choose what that is going to be. And also note the PLS or please package is essentially just doing the bare minimum. So it's only going to be doing a linear regression on top of your linear transformation for a PCA type 
of a model. So what happens if we want to utilize different models um, from the linear transformation that we have actually extracted from a given PCA? Well, look no further because we want well, we're going to be doing just that. Okay, so if you don't already have this package, go ahead and, and install. It should be install packages and it should be psych. So go ahead and install that package. Just load that on in. And the primary function that we'll be using from this package is something called prcomp. Now you can go ahead and just, you know, read up on a documentation of what pre -R comp is doing, but pretty much the one part I want to point out is pretty much what you can be putting in. So in this case, I'm plugging in a function uh, and notice that I don't have a response variable. Oops. I don't have a response variable here. So the primary reason why is that I'm only plugging in my independent features uh, in order to get a nice linear transformation based on those specific features that we have up up here, in fact. And the reason why is that we don't want to do any peaking as to where the Y variables are going to be located. And that would just lead to a huge, huge overfit. So let's go ahead and just run that. And of course, I reading in my train and scaling my data to get a summary of that PC fit. So pretty much here, we are getting the most important parts of um, the amount of variance that is explained with each additional principal component. And let's, last but not least, let's uh, make sure that we have our scree plot. Very, very instrumental. And remember the elbow rule of where pretty much we have to look at a, like pretty much like a, like a 45 degree angle, more or less, as to where the specific, uh, well, the number of components that we should actually be using. And this is pretty much the exact same finding that we had up here is that Within five or six, one of those features, you could probably argue for four, but five or six, that's pretty much like a good elbow, I should say, uh, and you choose either one of those. So let's go ahead and start imagining how we can actually apply this. So the very first thing that we want to make sure to do is that we want to use the model that we just had, PC fit. We want to use the model to transform our incoming data so that we are utilizing the same principal component transformation uh, in order to get a, like a similar outcome. Uh, and we will see that in store right here. So we would do that by this transform or this transform our given test observations. And you would do that by, you know, just calling predict function, pass in your PC.fit and pass in test observations. So let's go ahead and start predicting. And that should look like something like this, of course. Uh, but notice that we have 18 components. So we are essentially passing in our test observations test observations. Notice that our very first observation index, it starts with a nine, but each of these values, each of our, like every single one of our features within our test will be linearly transformed using the principal component fit function here. So that's where this prediction function comes into play. So this is going to be our new data set input that we'll be plugging into a linear regression, a neural network, a a random forest, you name it. So we will be storing the transformations of our test sets inside of our trans test right here. And just to make things a little bit more easy for the algorithm to just run everything, we want to convert this to a data frame. And now also note that since we agreed that we'll be using five or six variables uh, inside of our model, let's go ahead and use five. Uh, we want to make sure that we are only capturing the first five components. So we just, you know, just capture the first five and take a look at our transform test. We should have five yeah, principal components that we'll be using as our test set. So let's go ahead and create our training set. Now, a really cool thing about using PC fit, just looking at the variables here, we have standard deviation, what type of rotation transformation has been done, center scaling, and then this X. This X is our transformations that are done on our training sets. So we have noticed that the our very first index is 502. Let's go look at the train sets and notice that the very first observation is 502. So we know that the PC fit actually stores the transformed trained features, X features, I should say. So let's go ahead and start combining uh, this newfound knowledge into a new training set. So let's do it as that data frame over here. Let's combine this with, we just want train life expectancy, which is our Y value. And then let's get the PC.fit 
we want to call the x values and also remember that we only want the first five features so we should have six features in total let's take a look at that um, just take a look at that we have what we want to predict and we have our five independent features that we have going on here and just spruce that up a little bit let's get that new train the very first column we want to name that life.expectancy yep name that and then look at the new train once more okay so we have our y variable and we have our five different features that we are going to be using to predict what this y variable is going to be so let's go ahead and do a real simple linear model let's call it yeah it'd just be pretty much like a pcr lm model I'm not trying to use any of the same names here life expectancy expectancy tilde everything data is going to be coming from new train let's run that let's get a summary up here pcr lm model and this is what we have going on here. So let's go ahead and run the prediction part. So just pretty much, let's call this store this, PR, PCR predictions. And let's use the predict function. We wanna pass in our LM model and let's pass in transformed of test. Okay, so we have our transformation test. Let's run the RMSE. Actual is gonna be um, this is going to be test of life expectancy, and then we are going to have our predicted. Make sure we convert this to an as dot numeric, and our PCR prediction. Let's look at what that PCR prediction is here. Yeah, we want to convert that to a numeric, and voila, we have four point zero nine eight two one. Notice that's actually the exact same thing as what we had going on here. They're just making sure that just rerun everything right here. 4.09821. So pretty much we have the exact same output using different ways of actually getting to that output. And the most beautiful thing about this PR comp is that we can utilize the linear transformations for different models, such as, you know, XGBoost, Random Forest, Neural Networks, you name it. So this function is incredibly useful for any types of feature reductions and, you know, reductions of a complexity. If you made it this far in the video, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button for all future content that I'll be doing, and I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching.